Do you like my new hat? For those of you who are wondering what you've walked into, today is called Vision Sunday, so we're trying to create a vision. Do you like it? <laughs> well, this is my new hat. In fact, I ride my push bike with this now. I think Dame Edmund would be very jealous. What do you think? Unfortunately, the staff now call me the pothead pastor. It's a little bit rude, isn't it? Pothead pastor. Well, I took hours to make this. On yesterday, didn't I, darling? It took quite a while. I've got no message to bring you, so I hope you like the hat. <laughs> Ran out of time, but there it is. So we want to create a bit of a picture in your mind this morning. And, uh, well, I, I hope you can get over it. But um, there is a picture here. And, of course, it's to do with our year's theme, which is the year... The theme for the year is plant. Plant. Okay, who, who are the plant people here? Who, who are the plant people? Plant. What about the Kiwis? Plant. Got any plant people here? Plant. So, uh, well, I'll be a plant person if that's all right now. I, I'm going to get out of my hat. I'm, I'm sure you're disappointed. Would you like me to get the hat off? Would you like me to leave it on? It's very comfortable to sleep in. You should try it. But I want to plant some ideas in your head this morning, okay? Boom, boom, very nice. Very nice. Oh, thank goodness that's off. And everybody said, that's the best amen I've had for a while. Now, apparently it's in your way if I put it up on this. So there you go. Now get these off. Get these back on. Russell's back. The pothead pastor's left and you've now got the responsible one here. That was a bit of fun. I, I love Vision Sunday because it gives me a chance to dress up. So, there you go. So, the theme is plant for 2021. And uh, so this morning what I want to do is I just want to take a little bit of time and I want to lay a really clear foundation. Um, anything that we do, uh, it's not novelty, it's not, um, you know, we're not just kind of sitting down and just sort of trying to think of some novel idea to kind of, you know, tweak our attention or our curiosity for a while. It's actually, there, there's, there's something of the Word of God that's got to get into our hearts and get a hold of our hearts for this to become a reality. The whole theme of plant is a meaningless term unless we understand what God has to say about it. And there's something this morning that I believe God wants to, that, that, ha, that wants to come from God's heart to yours and mine. And uh, so this morning we're going to do that. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 13. And we've already seen it on the video, but Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to read, it's our key text um, for the theme. Matthew 13 verses 31 and 32. And we're going to read and it goes as follows. This is Jesus speaking. He says, he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like, I want you to help me out a little bit here this morning. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. What did he do? He planted it, planted it, planted it, whatever. He planted it in his field. And though it is the smallest of all your seeds, when, yet when it is grow, when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants, 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 and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can come and perch in its branches. <laughs> branches. Did I say that right? Did I? Comes and perches in its branches. Now, what's going on here? The disciples had a vision in their mind of what the kingdom of God looked like. And you've got to understand that their vision of what the kingdom of God looked like was nothing like the picture of what Jesus was trying to give them. In their mind, the kingdom of God was, you know, Jesus showed them something small, but in their mind, the kingdom of God was something huge. Um, it, it, was, it, was about, um, it was about something that was going to be public, something that was going to be prestigious, something that was going to um, impact and 
not only their lives, but those. It was something that was glorious. It was something that was mega. You put all the words in there you would like. And as a result, these guys, they'd left families and their jobs, and they were following Jesus, and they had this thing in their mind about what the kingdom of God was going to be. And they believed that this thing was just going to be bigger than Ben-Hur. And we actually see the way that they were thinking by a very insightful conversation. They had one day, they're walking down the road, and one of them says to Jesus, hey, Jesus, who's going to be the greatest? Who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? How many of you can see what's going on there? Their whole idea of a kingdom was nothing like the kingdom that Jesus had in mind or the form that it was going to take. So these guys clearly had visions of grandeur in their mind. And so Jesus then starts to talk about his death. And it's kind of like, that's not, that doesn't fit the narrative. That doesn't fit the narrative that they were talking, that they were uh, engaging in. You know, this kingdom, this, they're all excited. Who's going to be the greatest? Can I sit at your left? And can I sit at your right? And it's kind of like this magnificent kingdom. Um, and then Jesus starts to talk about his death. Well, that didn't fit. And Peter erupts and kind of goes, no way. That is not going to happen. Of course, those famous words, Jesus goes to Peter, get behind me, Satan. And so, you know, Peter's like, he's going, do you know what I've given up? Do you know what I've given up for this ministry? I've left a business. I've left a successful career. I've left it all behind to come and follow you because I believe that there's something magnificent coming. And if you start talking about dying and your death, this is going to go a different direction to what I thought. In fact, this looks like it's heading towards a disaster. Who can hear Peter's thought and sentiment in that? And so Jesus goes to Jerusalem, and in doing so, he ends up going to the cross, and all of their dreams of their, their kingdom are dying along the way. In fact, so much was the whole kingdom idea with the disciples, but it was known amongst others. Many other people saw Jesus as the one that was going to bring this kingdom, this mighty kingdom. So much so that when Jesus died on the cross, they put a sign above his head that said what? And it was a mocking sign. It was kind of like, hey, Jesus, the king of the Jews. This whole kingdom idea was pervasive. The Pharisees were threatened by it because, you know, this Jesus was going to bring it. He talked about a kingdom. And so they all have these pictures in their mind. How many know people paint different pictures in their mind to what sometimes you're saying? I can give you an example of that from this morning. Maybe I will later. Um, and so Jesus says, hey, this is not what the kingdom of God is like. And so let's just fast forward a little bit. Jesus dies dies on a cross. The disciples are shattered. They're kind of like, they think it's over. This, this idea of a kingdom, this magnificent kingdom that Jesus was going to usher in, well, Jesus dies. Just as he said he was, he dies and the dream of their kingdom dies with him. And they basically, they run for the hills. So let's go back before this takes place. And so here you have Jesus when he's with his disciples and he's trying his best to explain to them what the kingdom of God is like. Isn't it amazing how, you know, once we've got a picture in our head, it doesn't matter what someone says, it's really hard to unsee that picture. But here's Jesus explaining to them actually what the kingdom of God is like. And he says the kingdom of God is like a seed. It's like a tiny, weeny, teeny, weeny little mustard seed. It's so small and it's insignificant. And they're thinking the kingdom of God is, it's not like a seed, it's a rock. It's going to be like a boulder, it's going to come in and it's going to smash the opposition, it's going to obliterate the Romans, we're going to establish this mighty kingdom, I'm going to be sitting at the right, I'm going to be sitting at the left. You work it out. Um, they, they've got these ideas, so the, the last thing in their mind that the kingdom was, or thing that would represent the kingdom was a seed, it was more like in their mind it was something that was going to be massive and it was going to be a rock. Jesus goes, no, 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 no. It's a seed. It's insignificant. It appears insignificant. It appears that it's, it's harmless. It's pointless. You look at that seed and you think, there is no, come on, there is no way that anything significant, there's no way a tree could grow out of that, right? You look at a seed and you go, it's a seed for crying out loud. There's no way that out of that 
this could grow. And Jesus goes, that's exactly the way the kingdom of God comes. That's exactly the way the kingdom of God works. Now, we have the benefit of hindsight today in 2021. This took place in the backwater of the Middle East somewhere. Who would have dreamed? You roll the clock forward. Today, on planet Earth, there's approximately 2.4 billion people that believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. Approximately 2.4. Approximately 31% of the world population profess Christianity in some form or other. Now, how many of you know that they never dream when, 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 they, when they, at that time, at that place, they would never have dreamed that out of this thing, out of this little insignificant thing, that this could ever happen. And how did it happen? It all began with a seed being planted. You see, understand this this morning. When Jesus died on the cross and was buried, it wasn't just a body being buried, it was a seed being planted. In his own words, Jesus said this in John 12, 24. He said, unless a seed, come on, help me out if you know it. Unless a seed, it's up on the board. Unless a seed falls to the ground, a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. In the natural. Well, firstly, Jesus, he, you know, unless a seed falls, Jesus fell, if you like. He he. He ascended from heaven. He ascended from the throne of heaven, from the glories of heaven. How many of you know, by any measurement, that was a, that was a come down? Jesus fell and he, what? And he died. Now, in the natural, a kernel of wheat has two parts. It has a shell and it has an inside. And the shell is called the endosperm. And the inside is called the embryo. Feels like I'm giving you the talk this morning, doesn't it? Now, in order for that embryo to grow, that shell actually has to give up its life. That shell actually has to die in order for the life inside, that embryo inside, to germinate and take root and begin to grow. Are you with me? And without the dying of the outer, the endosperma, without the dying of that, the life that's inside of that seed can't come to life. The outer shell must give up its life for the embryo to live. In the death of Christ, as it were, it was like the shell, the human body, God became flesh, the Word became flesh. The human body, if you like, died. And then in doing so, that death enabled the new life, the eternal life, not just the temporary life, but the eternal life to come out of him. Jesus was was raised immortal. He was raised as a resurrected Christ. Who believes that this morning? The human temporary life died and the eternal life glorified life of God burst forth. He was no longer just limited to his human body. Talk about the disciples meeting together in the room. Jesus comes through, literally comes through the door, comes through the wall. Didn't mean I opened the door. He comes. He had a glorified body. He was different, yet he was still had a physical form. But it was a glorified body. And so that is representative of the life that that is going to give to others. In fact, the Bible refers to Jesus as the first fruit. 1 Corinthians 15, 20, let's read it. It says, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. Am I talking to people who believe that this morning? Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits, he was the first to be raised. That outer shell died, but eternal life immortality, you know, mortality, put on immortality, that immort- immortal life come out, and we, it is the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. It's a sign of what will happen, the, the Jesus is the first fruit of all who will follow, and we too will one day have resurrected bodies. In fact, even our bodies, there's so much about planting, and, and the seed and planting, even our bodies uh, are you are referred to in that light. Have a look in uh, verse 42 and 44 of the same chapter. 
says, so it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. So it talks about this body when it dies, when it is sown, when it is buried or whatever we do with it, it's perishable, but it is raised imperishable. The old life is the doorway gives birth to the new life, eternal life. How many of you are glad about that? Read on. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. And that is so often true. People in their old age and people go through some kinds of disease or whatever, it's very dishonoring, but it's going to be, even it doesn't matter how dishonoring it might have been in the natural, it is going to be raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. So often that's true of people in their end years or going through things, sown in weakness, but it is raised in power. That's great news. Let's read on. It is sown a natural body and it is raised a spiritual body if there is a natural body there is also a spiritual body so how do you and i get that kind of life sure it happened to jesus the human life died and then the new life the eternal life the temporary life died but the eternal life it lived how do you and i have that well you believe in jesus you ask him into your life and there's a whole lot of way we say, you know, I invited Jesus into my life. I asked Jesus into my heart. I, I believed upon Jesus. But when we do that, what is actually happening is this. You are actually receiving a seed. And the Bible calls it an imperishable seed. You know, that which is perishable is sown. We're sown, but imperishable is never dies, it lives, right? We actually have in us an imperishable seed. The kingdom of God actually comes to you in the form of a seed. Let me give you some scriptures. 1 Peter 1, 23. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable seed. Who can see that? Look at 1 Peter, sorry, 2 Peter 1, 4. What it calls, it looks at it slightly differently, but it's the same idea. These have been given to us for His very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the... In the what? Divine nature. When you ask Jesus into your life, you get a new... You are The, the first verse I just read to you said, you are born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable seed. You receive a new nature. You receive a divine nature. Okay, I can see you're overwhelmed, underwhelmed by that. Has anything changed? Does anything change? When you ask Jesus into your life, has anything changed? Well, two answers. Everything has changed. One, Peter 1, 23, I just read it, says, you are born again. There's nothing more life-changing than to be born again. But anything that is born, and just as, you know, human life begins as a tiny seed at conception, but then when a child is born, it's little, it's seemingly under, it's underdeveloped, but everything is there, right? All the potential is now there. It doesn't, you know, it, so it doesn't start as a rock, it doesn't start as something that's, that's complete, it's the kingdom of God comes into your life, a seed. That's all it is. Yet everything is in that seed for you to become and for God to grow in you the thing that He wants to grow in you. Everything is there. We're born again. We have a divine nature. In fact, you now have a new order of life. Let me explain that to you. In fact, can I just say, let me just make this statement and I'll show you what I mean. You actually have then the highest order of life. You see, there's different levels of life. Plant life is a different level to animal life. An animal is aware of things that a plant is not. Now, I don't know about cats, but dogs, yes. All right, sorry if you're a cat lover, but you know. You feed the dog and you look, the dog says, you feed me, you care for me, you, tend, you look after me, you must be a God. The cat goes, you feed me, you look after me, you tend to me, I must be a God. <laughs> never mind, never mind. <laughs> but a dog is aware of things that a plant's not. 
The dog is a higher form of life than a plant. A human is a higher level of life than a, than a dog. In fact, hu- humans are aware of things. Dogs are aware of things that plants aren't aware of. Humans are aware of things that dogs aren't aware of. I don't think Eddie, our dog, laid awake last night worrying about the injustice in the world. Dogs are blissfully unaware of certain... As hum- and so it's interesting, if a, if a despot wants to um, get rid of a group of people, they will dehumanize them. They will make them appear to be like an animal, like, you know, they're just rats. So when we get rid of them, we're not actually get rid of, get rid of humans, because that's a high level of life. We can't do that. We intuitively know that, but let's get rid of the rats. And an animal liberationist who wants us to care better for animals, one of the ways in which they will do that, and you see ads on TV, a little piggy with his wings. And a, we try and humanize animals. We try and make them, you know, they've got the same feelings as us and whatever, so you get what's going on there. And so we know that there are different life levels. And, hum, you know, animals are, are a higher life level than a plant, and, and this is the craziness of the world. Some people would like to say that, you know, that a tree is just as important as a human, but we all know that's not true. Please say amen if you agree with that. Um, so here's the thing. We can see a progression of life levels. So as a human, you are aware of things that a dog's not. You see things, you feel things, you're aware of things. You see things that a dog would never see. Now here's the point this morning. When you get born again, when you get a born again life, you actually see things and start to feel things and become aware of things that you didn't see or aware of before. Because you have entered into the highest form of life. And just as as a human sees things that a dog doesn't, suddenly as a human being without the imperishable seed in our life without being born again of perishable seed. I didn't see things before. I didn't think like that before. Suddenly you begin to think and see and feel differently because you have entered into what you were actually made for, the highest form of life you've been born again. I think that's all right. Changes the way you think. changes the way you act and it starts to change the way you feel you start to, you know you, like what you think starts to change the way you act and the way you act starts to change the way you feel is that true and so you begin to feel differently about life you you know the, the mercy of God you've got a seed in you right God's planted the seed into you and it's just a seed but as it grows in you suddenly over time, it, it, this does it, it's not the rock that comes in and bang, we're instantly changed. Uh, the seed comes in and we begin and we walk on this proce- progress of life. And it's not about earning your salvation, but it's about becoming all that the kingdom of God wants to be inside you. The kingdom of God is within you and it's going to grow and it's going to increase. And so you start to, to think about things and feel things differently to what you did before. The mercy of God starts to become so real to you it becomes more real to you than what people may have done to you and so you begin to be able to forgive and 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 restore relationships whereas before you couldn't do that why because the kingdom of God the seed is starting to grow it's starting to come to maturity who can see that what Jesus says about you suddenly becomes more real to you than what other people might have said about you. What's going on there? The seed's growing. The kingdom of God is forming inside of me. You see, you've got something powerful in you. When you receive Jesus Christ into your life, you receive a power, and it's not a rock kind of power. It's it's a hidden power. But it's a power nevertheless. You see, if you get a seed and if you throw it on the concrete, you want to smash that concrete. And so you get your little mustard seed or your little pumpkin seed or whatever it is you've got. And you get it and you go, throw it as hard as you can at the concrete. What's going to happen? 
zip zero. How many of us not going to break the concrete? But I tell you, you get that seed and you plant it underneath that concrete. How many of you have seen pictures of rock, of concrete busted open with an oak seed planted underneath? And over years, the power of constant pressure, the power of something growing inside, the power of that seed begins to work its way through. And things that you think it would never, ever possible to break through, that seed begins to grow and it begins to break through things. There's a power inside of you. And it's the kingdom of God, and it's just a seed. But when it is grown, and let me tell you, if, you, if that seed is in you and you water it, it's going to grow. The kingdom of God is actually about power. The Bible says the, power, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It's a power, but it's not the explosive kind of, you know, bust everything wide open. No, it can just come in as a seed. Let me give you just a scripture, just another one on that. 1, 1 Thessalonians 1, five. Because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power. You know, we, we can think Christianity, it's just about, it's a philosophy, it's a belief system. You know, it's just about, and you know, I've got certain needs in my life, and I'm going to try Christianity, and I like that bit there, and I like that bit there, and if it's, maybe it fits me, and no, 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 that's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is receiving the imperishable seed. It's about receiving Jesus into your life, the divine nature, and then that growing in you. And as I said, it's a power. It will break through things that you think you've never been able to break through. Is that good news for you this morning? So, I've got more to say about that, but... I'm going to leave that there because I want to move from what God wants to do in you. The kingdom of God is within you. Isn't that an amazing thing? You're born again. You, you, it's not to be proud, but just to understand what God has done in you. And, and you can't help but change if you water that seed. I'll tell you about talking then about how. But God only not wants, not, not wants to do something in you. He wants to do something through you. He wants you to bring God's kingdom to the world. We, the Jesus taught us how to pray and he said this, he said, when you pray, our Father's art in heaven, hallowed be your name, what? Your kingdom come. So what does that mean? God, your Father, your kingdom come. Okay, come and just like throw that big boulder out of heaven and let's just, you know, everyone's, no, no, no. How does the kingdom come? It comes through a seed. So how do we extend the kingdom of God? How do we cooperate and partner with God about seeing the kingdom of God come into your situation, into your work, into our community, your neighborhood, etc.? We do it through planting, sowing a seed. We become, we sow kingdom seeds because it's only as we do that that the kingdom of God multiplies. Who can see that? In 1922, if you go on um, Google, Oh, hang on, what's the new one? Bing. No, that, no, no, it's not Bing. It's all right, it doesn't matter. Red herring, forget it. Possum. Squirrel. Um, I've explained before, when you're preaching, there's planes just flying around your head, and it's up to you which ones you let land, and sometimes you should never let them land. I know, I know. Um, now I've totally forgotten what I was saying. 1922, thank you. If you jump on Google, back where we were, sh- sh- rewind. If you go on to Google and Google um, Chermside Historical, Hysterical, Historical Society, look through the chronological order of things section. In 1922, it's got a little line. It says, Chermside Assembly of God began in a house. 1922. Next year is what? 2022. What does that make us? 100 years old. So 100 years ago, 99 years ago, it just says a few people met in a house. And you go, well, that's not very significant. That's pretty small. And you know what? It's true. It is seemingly insignificant. 
and it is small. By all measurements, it's small. But how many of you know that today, it's a very different looking beast? Beast, church, you hear me. Pardon? So, what, we, what began as something small, but it was just planted, and along the, over the years, many of you have been a part of watering it, many of you have been a part of, plant, of tending to it, but today we are where we are. And that's why we never ever, that's why, you, that's why Zechariah um, 4.10, I think it is, says, you know, do not despise small beginnings. Never look at something and go, well, that's, that's nothing because it's small. Because out of little things, big things grow. Come on, sing it with me. Out of little things, big things grow. One more time. Out of little things, big things grow. You got it, right. It's just a seed to something small, insignificant, a few people meeting in a house. Then there was a farmer that lived just out where the hall is. Hated the Christians that used to meet up on the hill here. They made too much noise. Is there something familiar about that story? He had a daughter that was sick. He come down and prayed for her and she was miraculously healed. Transformed man. Gave his life to Jesus. Then in around the 1945-ish, I'm, I'm pretty close, around 1945, he donated this land that we're on for the church to build a building. And we think about it, we go, oh, yeah, he donated some land, he's a farmer. He was a little farmer. He was five foot ten. No, 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 he, he, he didn't have a lot of land, but he sold some of, he gave some of it to the church to build a building. Think about that, it was around towards the end of World War II. How many know people were looking for everything they could find in those days to survive? It was a lean time, and he sowed his land to this local church. which We are reaping what someone else sowed. And we're never just sowing. We're never just planting. We go, oh, this year's the year of planting. Does that mean we're not going? No, we are always, we are, we are reaping what we planted over the years. We, we are reaping here the, what, what that man planted back in 1945, 46. And you remember when Nick and I, when we arrived here nine years ago, it was a very different church to what it is now. I don't remember thinking, what do we need to plant? And it took, pa- sometimes you feel like you're not getting anywhere. Anyone felt that way? I mean, it takes patience. And it still takes patience today. But so that man, he planted. And today we have Center Point Church. And so can I just, I'm saying this this morning to say that we are, as a church, we, we are 100 years old, almost 100 years old. And if we don't get busy planting, how many of you know you reach a stage where you become too old to plant if you get my drift? <laughs> so as a church, I'm saying to you this morning that we're not about just maintaining. Oh, it's COVID. Let's just, let's all, no, no. We're going to do the things we're going to do. We're going to care for people and nurture people and care for people as they come back. And I understand all of that. But can I just say the thing that we're always going to be doing and, and through this year, our theme is we're going to plant. We're going to plant. We're a planting church because that's, we have no choice if we're going to be a kingdom kind of church because kingdom churches plant, kingdom people plant. So here's some, just three things that it takes. It takes intentionality. It says in that verse, in verse 31, it says, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, but a man took it. How many know it, it was then his seed? So it was his own. He held it and he could have held on to it. I like that seed. That seed's going to feed me, not for long, but it'll feed me. So he had, to, he had to make a decision to sow it. And so there's work involved. It's hard work sowing. He had to let it go. He had to believe and trust that God was going to, something good was going to happen with that seed. So it took intentionality. How many you know that's what it takes to sow, to plant, sorry. So it takes intentionality. It takes patience. And but. We don't just sit around twiddling our thumbs, waiting. We planted that and we're not doing anything. No, no. In Corinthians it says, one plants and one waters, but God gives the increase. How many know you've got to water something when you plant it? You've got to tend it. You've got to care for it. So it takes patience. So in the meantime, it says, here's the thing. I can't make anything grow. 
doesn't matter how hard I try. I remember trying to be taller when I was a little kid. Hadn't sort of, I remember trying to make myself grow. You ever tried to make, you can't, I might do something I regret if I try that again. If you try and make something grow, it won't happen. I can't make anything grow. All I can do is plant and water. Plant and water, but God gives the increase. So I have to be patient. But we're not doing anything. We're not inactive. In the meantime, that seed has been put underground. It's like, whoo, what's going on down there? Maybe I'll put it upside down. I don't know. And then there's harvest. There's a, there's a growth. Now, when you have a harvest, is that luck? Is that kind of like, gee, that was a fortunate turn of events? No, no, no. When it happened, it happened. It didn't just happen. The fact is, we have planted, we have watered, but we gave, We say, God bless our church. God, God bless me. God bless this. God bless our church. We have to give him something to bless. It's because we planted something and God's blessed it and God gave the increase. Who believes that this morning? Some of you maybe come from church backgrounds where this whole concept has taken to the nth degree and you've heard it over and on. But I, I tell you, there's a baby in that bath. There's a baby in that bath. Planting. Nikki, uh, her family, the mother's maiden name was Curry, C-U-R-R-Y, come from England. Shh, don't tell anybody. And uh, back in 1927, her great-great-great-grandfather started a little bicycle business called Curry's. That was a creative name, wasn't it? It's like us when we started our plumbing business. We had family meetings. We talked about what we would call the business. We went through all these names and we ended up calling it Harper's Plumbing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but he planned a little business, called it Curry's. Curry's Bikes and whatever. And they made their own bike and they sold it. And then it grew and they started selling motorbikes. I knew, the moment I saw Nikki, I pushed bikes and motorbikes. I felt an attraction. It was in the, was in the genes. It was, um, but here's the thing. Started small. It was interesting. When I was um, in Perth recently and, and was put into quarantine, had to spend three days with my mother-in-law in lockdown, um, I, I read the Curry's, got the Curry's book and had a bit of a read through it. And just to see the history of the business and how the first year, kind of like it just not much happened the second year. And eventually, today, there's over 580 Curry stores right across England. Our little things, big things grow. But someone had to plant something. Someone started something. Would never have got that if someone hadn't planted it. And boy, did they do some watering along the way. Have you got the picture? So this year, we're not just a maintaining church. We're not an entertaining church. We are a planting church. Who believes that? That's what we're about. So let me just for a moment just talk about what we want to plant this year. And as I said to you, we're not just planting. We will be reaping. There will be harvest in other areas. But these are some of the things that we're looking to plant this year. So number one. You may have heard about this if you've been around for the last couple of months, but we are planting a coffee shop out the front of the church. <laughs> hey, Ali, come up here real quick. Ali, come up here real quick. You've been, now, Ali's, Ali's our coffee man, and uh, he's put a, he puts his van just as a way of kind of doing something in the interim. He's planting the seed. He's got his coffee shop, his, his little van out the front there with his gazebo, gazebo, got his gazebo out there, and... Ali, just really briefly, just really brief, just tell us what's happening out there, how it's going for you. Yeah, so cool. Uh, yeah, we're out there at 6 till 12 at the moment. We're meeting neighbours in the area. We're meeting kind of people coming in, in between work. We've had people even this, this week kind of ask what's, what's inside kind of thing. It's just, it's, we've been saying it's been really good to just kind of see people in our area and kind of not just be kind of loud on a Sunday, but we're just being kind of, we're normal people and kind of keen to make good coffee and, and whatever else. So it's been great just to see in the first few weeks how it's been received in the area. So, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. We are normal people, and I'm so glad that you met Ali during the week and come to church this morning. As you can see, we are normal people. But isn't that great? Um, sold about 60 coffees or so on Friday. Um, that's a lot of people coming through. 
And it's just like, just, just plan it. It's like, well, that's small. That's not, that's not a lot. That's not much. Out of little things, big things grow. We got it? Come on, one more time. Out of little things, big things grow. So we're going to plan a coffee shop. And it's not just about the coffee. It's not about the shop. But it's about connection with community. It's our mission project as a church. Things that's going to... And, and so there's other things that are going to go, go hand in hand in that. With that, we are planting this year, we're planning a vacation care program. And uh, our wonderful kids pastor, Nicola Young, she's a very qualified person. And she's, we've been, and along with Reg, uh, who's on staff here, he, we've been working really hard to make sure that we are um, set up for vacation care. There's government requirements and regulations. Can you believe they said we had to upgrade our toilets? Shock horror. Our toilets and our kitchen weren't up to scratch. Some people are hard to please, aren't they? I mean, they're only about 60 years old. What's the matter with that? So uh, at the end of February, the build, we've signed the contract. The builders have started. We are going to upgrade our toilet and our kitchen. I know. Where's everybody gone on Sunday? They're all over the toilet, Pastor. We will, we'll give you some exact dates, etc., and we'll tell you about it. There were a couple of weeks where um, we're going to put um, little portable loos out there. I know that's not the easiest and the best, but we'll do that. And then uh, we've got a few extra trees out there. Never mind. Um, so we, we will make it. We will make it work. Um, but th that's on the. And the reason we're doing that is because. And how many of you know that that is going to be so symbiotic with the coffee shop? And so we're going to turn that hall over there is going to become a coffee shop. And it's going to be. It's going to work as a coffee shop. And then on the weekend, it's going to become kids ministry. That's not going to change. Um, but so those things are going to go. We're going to plant play groups in here as a result of that. And so we want to, the goal is to have three play groups happening every week. Coffee, places to sit, coffee shop, air conditioning. How many of you know we're going to have, that's going to be a hive of activity of people. And I tell you, more is caught than taught. There's a lot of people who are going to find their way into the kingdom of God through that. I believe it. Absolutely believe it. We're going to plant vacation care. That's sowing seeds if ever there was. Sowing seeds. You know, Billy Graham years ago in the 50s come to Australia, ran crusades. Thousands of people got saved. Thousands of people got saved. And you go, why doesn't that work today? I'll tell you why. It's because during the 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s, so many kids went to Sunday school and seeds were planted. And then one day, years later, those seeds were there. The kids might have gone off. They might have been doing their own thing. But one day they come and they heard Billy Graham preach the word of God. Those seeds were germinated and was like, I'm giving my life to Jesus. We've got as a church be about planting seeds in the generations to come. You're hearing me this morning, church. Vacation care, which is going to lead to before and after school care the following year. So that's, and again, we've got to have requirement, certain requirements we have to fulfill for that. Um, we want to plant this year by the grace of God, and we're working, uh, believing that God's going to open the way here. But, you know, I said we're 100 years old. If we never reproduce ourselves, when, are, when, when, is, when is the right time? You know, he, what does the scripture say about he who looks to the wind and he's never going to plant? He's never going to. So th there's never a better time than now. So we're believing that God's going to lead us in that. And we want to plant this year a new location. We're still. Now, hear me. I said this in the first service, and people thought that I meant, like I said, people hear what they hear, not necessarily what you say people thought that I meant that we're going to leave here. No, 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 no. We're not doing all what we're doing to be leaving here, but we are going to grow. Something's going to grow out of here because that's the way the kingdom of God works. And we're going to plant something else that's going to grow into something fully grown itself. So we want to plant a new, a new location. Some of you are going to be a part of it. Some of you are going to find a new lease of life. But so somewhere north of here, we, we'll give you more details on that, and we don't know a lot of it, but we believe, and that's where God... So we're putting it out there this morning. I'm sowing the seed that we're going to plant something out of this church. Who's up for that? That's the kingdom of God. It grows, and I believe one of the greatest ways to transform a community is to plant a seed in there, and the, be, the, way, the only seed that God works through is the seed of a local church, people to gather together. So we're going to plant that. In 2022, we want to plant a very own college. We want to plant a college. 
let me put something else out there for you to let something germinate in you. We want to plant a creative academy. If we're going to be a growing planting church, we need people that are being trained. We need people that are being trained in all kinds of different things. So a college and a creative academy is something we want to work towards. And again, we've got the people in place who can make that happen. So be praying for that, yeah? There's going to be other things we're going to plant. Some of you are going to plant life groups this year. Some of you are going to plant ministries. We're going to plant all different things. But I think that's enough for this morning. What do you say? I think we've got enough for the year. So I'm excited about the year. We're going to plant. And it is a different morning this morning. But, you know, I believe that God's going to give us increase. And it says, birds of the air will come and make their nest. That speaks of permanence. That speaks of rest. That speaks of security. That speaks of a home. How many know that's what people are going to find in this place? I'm going to wrap this up. So how about, how about you this morning? Have you received eternal life? Have you received the imperishable seed? Christianity is not just a philosophy. It's not just a way of thinking. It is a way of thinking, but it's not just. It's so much more than that. It's about a power, and it's about that seed being planted in you. And you receive that by believing in Jesus. Have you received the imperishable seed? Have you received eternal life? The natural seed that you were born with, your natural body, it's going to die. I've got news for you. We're all going to die. No one's going to get out of life alive, okay? But God can put something in you that's eternal. Eternal life. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting, eternal life life have you received jesus i don't know you all this morning just if you've never received jesus in your life just say jesus i believe in you i believe you died on the cross for my sin I ask you to come into my life let the seed the kingdom of god come jesus i want to know you i want to become more like you simply pray that prayer how else do we respond this morning? Well, this week is the week, as we said earlier, a week of prayer and fasting. What's that all about? It's about watering the seed. Don't tune out. Listen to me for a second. Why do we fast and pray? Why do those two things, why are they so powerful together? Sometimes I'm too connected to things that I shouldn't be connected to as much as I am. They're not bad things. They're just not the best thing. And sometimes I'm not connected enough to God. Well, fasting disconnects you from things that you might be a little bit too connected to. And it's a time where we intentionally withdraw for some things. How many of you may be a little bit too connected to food? No, we won't go down there. But it, we can fast a number of things, but I think food is certainly needs to be one of them. And so we disconnect from those things through fasting. And we connect, reconnect with God through prayer. Put those two things together and that's powerful. You can find out about it on the website. We've got some instructions. I would encourage you to read those. We've got numbers of opportunities to meet together corporately. Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, 6 a.m. We're going to meet here corporately. Wednesday night, we're going to pray together corporately as a church. I encourage you to be there. Um, we're going to, I'm encouraging you to find one or two people to pray with, prayer triplets or prayer partners or whatever you want to call it meet and you can work out your own times where you just meet and pray together and then personally I want you to do personal devotions together and we've chosen a devotion call you for you called growing in holiness written by a man called rc sprout someone said should it be rc sprout calling about planting but never mind rc sprout great theologian and it's a great it's a great thing you can find it on your bible app jump on there and you can use that during the week and that's we're all in that together and uh, so just be a part of that and i'll tell you what that's doing that's watering the seed. It's, it's saying, God, I'm disconnecting and I'm reconnecting. And when you do that, God can water that eternal seed inside of you. And I believe it's going to be life-changing for you who believes that today. So there you go. There's a way to respond this morning. And today also, lastly but not least, today is Mission Sunday. And we, I know we're going a little bit longer than usual here this morning, but today is Mission Sunday and we've got a great couple in our church, Alistair and Marlene. They were missionaries in Japan for five years. And Alistair, why don't you just pop up here for a moment. Alistair is, is leading our, our missions ministry. 
Alistair, just, just for a couple of minutes, just inspire us with mission. Thanks, Alistair. Why don't you give him a welcome? Oh, what a great word. Who's excited about 2021 and plant? Yeah, a couple of us. That's great. Honestly, amazing message, Russell. Amazing. You know, it's, it's, it's Mission Sunday, and, you know, mission is all about planting and watering. It's all about planting and watering. And, um, you know, I just we, we support missions all over the world, all over the world, and, and, and Western Australia, right here in Australia. But today I just want to focus on two things, um, our local missions with the, with the coffee container. Uh, who's excited about the coffee container? Yeah, who loves coffee? Uh, you know, as, as Pastor Russell said, it's, it's not about the coffee. It's about building a bridge in our community, connecting with the, the people over the road, with businesses. And, and I, d- I just loved hearing from, from Pastor Ali with, with, with the, the connections we're making already. Um, I also want to talk about MPART. Now, MPART is just an amazing organization. I don't know of a, another organization that's more effective in planting and watering. Um, they, MPART began in 1998 uh, with an amazing vision, a vision to plant 100,000 churches. That, that, that's a big number. That's significant. But you know, right now, today, well over 30,000. I, I couldn't find it this morning, but I'm pretty sure it's up close to 34,000 uh, churches have been planted. You know, that's 34,000 communities. Let's give God a hand. You know, they're, they're transformed by the name of Jesus. And you know what? If, we, if you call Centerpoint Church home, if you are part of this church and you're sowing and giving into this church and to this house, then you're part of that. That's part of your inheritance. And I, I don't know about you, but I find that humbling. It blesses me. And, and I, you know, I'm part of that, part of investing in the kingdom of God. And uh, so with, with a special offering over the, over the last couple of months that Pastor Russell shared uh, with, the, with the coffee container and in part um, together, um, we've got a vision uh, to, to raise about $150,000, and it's going to go to Empire uh, to continue planting and, and watering churches across India and Asia and, and the, uh, the coffee container. But, you know, uh, maybe, maybe you've already given. If you have, thank you. Uh, but perhaps you've uh, been a bit busy like Marlene and I. Like, uh, we, as soon as we heard about, about the vision, we were just like, wow, I want to be part of that. And then, you know, with Christmas and the end of school and then starting a new school with Hannah and, and New Year and all the stuff and holidays. You know, we were just, until today, we're like, we hadn't had a chance to sow and invest in that. And um, can I just encourage you, just take some time, talk with your partner, pray about it. Let, let's come together and plant something amazing. Marley and I, like we believe in this 100%. My girls are right behind her. They, they gave today as well, uh, Ivana and Hannah. And, um, you know, they, they just, we're right behind this. And just let's come together as a church and plant something amazing. I, I love the story Pastor Russell shared about the, the farmer in a really skinny time, uh, sold a bit of land or gave some land to the church, sold it and gave it to the church. And I, I just think that's amazing. Uh, in Second Corinthians 9, it says, God gives seed to the sower. And uh, to be honest, Marley and I, we're in a bit of a skinny season right now. You're just after Christmas and holidays. Uh, but, you know, we can't afford not to sow seed. If you want more seed, we've got to sow. So just, just a little challenge there, like let's, let's come together and do something great for the kingdom of God. Thanks, Pastor Ross. Thanks, Alistair. All right, so it is Mission Sunday, and uh, it's not about us, it's about the kingdom of God. And so, so far, just I said I'd give you a running report. So far, we have, and just to be clear, Alistair, $150,000, we're estimating that the coffee shop, to do it properly, and by the time we satisfy government regulations, we've actually got to put a soundproof fence, a sound diminishing fence along the neighbor's property, etc. So by the time we've done all that, we we won't get much change out of 100 grand to do that properly. Um, And so that leaves about... About fifty, sixty thousand dollars, which we want to make sure that we put into our other overseas missions. So just so that you, that's clear, and so that's our hundred fifty is about the total we're going. Is the total we're going for? So far, we're up to sixty-two. Here we go. Have it. Sixty-two thousand seven hundred seventy dollars. Fantastic. Yeah. So that's that's awesome. That's a great start. Thanks everybody that has signed into that. As you can see, uh, there's still a lot of room for a lot of people to be involved. And uh, can I encourage you today? Be a part of it. Um, and just let's let's sow and make this together. I just think even if you interface with it in some way, that you can say one day when we're reaping the benefits, that you go, well, I was a part of that. So be a part of it, church. Um, fantastic. All right. Well, I've said enough. 2021. Also, when we leave today, we've got seeds available. I want you to take some. 
go and plant them. And as they grow, you can remind yourself of what this theme is for the year. We've got vegetables and we've got flowers. Who, who's more of a vegetable kind of person? Who's more of the flower kind? Okay, well, we've got both out there. So you can help yourself. We've got some seeds and you can plant them. Fantastic. Well, let's all stand. We're going to finish this morning. Thank you for your patience today. Um, we're going to receive our giving. Well, we, you know, we, giving is an act of our worship. And many of you have already set it up and it's all happening online. But let's just take a moment. And uh, Father, we just want to thank you today for the opportunity to give, to plant. And Father, today, whether it comes out of our lack or our abundance, Father, I pray you'd bless every giver today. Thank you for the privilege of sowing into something that is eternal. Thank you, Father, that we can lay up treasures in heaven today. So, Father, bless this offering that's been received. In Jesus' name, and everybody said,